Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, well, thanks uh, for coming to my talk. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you're here. Um, oh, just let me continue with my first slide. Um, thanks for joining me. Um, for the people who don't know me, I'm a very well, a bit of informal speaker. So before I'm going to introduce myself, I want to know what kind of audience I have in front of me. And since we're going to talk, uh, talk about um, code, coding semantics, I want to know what kind of programmers I have in, f uh, in front of me. So which of you uh, prefer to program in Java by the raise of hands? Java programmers? A lot. Yeah, of course. Uh, do we have any uh, JavaScript? Yeah, OK. Uh, the major uh, four, there's uh, Python is uh, one of them. A couple. And C sharp. OK. OK. Interesting. I'm not going to judge you for now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, when we're talking about code, uh, a wise man once said that uh, that code is a way of telling your colleagues how you feel about them, and I'm not disagreeing with me uh, with him because well that would be very unwise. Um, but I would like to add something to his uh, to this statement because I'm I don't only believe that uh, code is a way for you to telling your colleagues how you feel about them. I think code could could only uh, could also be a reflection of who you are. And well, I'm going to give you some uh, state or well, uh, arguments for the statement uh, during my talk. But first, well, I got to know you. You will get to know a little bit about me. Um, my name is uh, Rosanne Joosten. I'm currently working at uh, Open Value, and uh, I'm a psychology graduate at the University of Amsterdam. And well, how I came into the field of IT, we can talk it over a cup, cup of coffee or during one of uh, the breaks. <laughs> I'm not gonna well, bore you with that story right now. Um, but my um, interest in psychology always well, remained and it's still present. And um, for the first couple of years when I started coding, I took really great notice in the code reviews that I got from my colleagues because I, well, I wanted to improve myself. And I, so I took real um, great importance from the code reviews I got. And I tried to figure out the rules. I, I tried to figure out what was the right way to code. And I found out that, well, not every colleague gave the same code review. So I thought, OK, so it has something to do with personality, perhaps, perhaps your preferences. And then my psycho psychological well, interest uh, boils up again. And when I first uh, stated to colleagues of mine that I was a former um, psychology student, they always say, like, oh, you can look right through me. You know what kind of person I am. And well, I always say I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I don't know for sure, but I could always venture a guess. Um, and I can base it on the research that I remember. And well, later on, you will uh, know that my memory is not that great. <laughs> so, so I can always venture a guess for the research I, you remember. And this talk, we're going to talk um, about research. And I'm going to show you some results. And I want you to um, let this be the research for you to use. but not as a hard science, because we're going to talk about a psychological concept. We're going to talk about personality. And personality, it's abstract. You can't measure it. It's not like volume, or it's not like distance. You can't use a ruler and measure how nice a person is. It's so abstract that we have to, we, we developed a, a model, a view to look at it. And when we're uh, looking, are going to look at research, we have to well, pick a view. And with that view, we can well, make conclu draw conclusions out of research. Well, um, there are a couple of uh, theories around uh, personality. One of the big ones is called the Big Five Personality Trait, or the Big Five uh, Factor Model. It's called that way because it consists of five factors. <laughs> 
kind of obvious. And uh, you can remember these five factors more easily by abbreviating them. And I'm going to do that quite often, and I'm going to repeat these factors quite often. Um, o for openness, C for conscientiousness, E for extroversion, A for agreeableness, and N for neuroticism. And for now, these terms are just terms, apart from that they abbreviate to ocean. So I'm going to give you uh, some examples, and I'm going to cover uh, a little bit of uh, theory uh, behind these terms. So we're on the same page when we're going to look at research. So at the beginning of our ocean is the O for openness. And when you think about openness, um, it's not the way it's not openness in a way that you are open in sharing your uh, your views. It is more um, you're open for new experiences. And these are the curious people and the adventurous people. And ev every factor of the five factor model um, is a factor on which you can score on a certain degree. It is not a factor that is absent or present everyone has a degree on each of these five factors. So you can score low or high. I've, I've given some examples to give you a sense of, of, of what high and low uh, means on openness. Um, the factor of openness is the first one of the, oh, well, the first, <laughs> first of the ocean, but uh, the first correlation that has been found here in research is that the people who prefer to program in Java always tend to uh, score high on openness. And the funny thing, the theory they, they gave behind it was that uh, Java, compared to the other four um, languages that we uh, well, briefly uh, sum summarized, um, Java is a, a language that has much uh, layers and uh, you can well be very creative with the language. That's their theory. <laughs> Um, so that's their theory for why people who prefer to program in Java always tend to score high on openness. Maybe you recognize yourself in this, maybe you don't. It's psychological research. Our O for openness and our C for conscientiousness, which is a very difficult word to say, so please don't laugh at me when I pronounce it. Badly. Um, no, well, uh, the C for conscientiousness. And conscientiousness has to do with being organized and being structured. So I gave this example because I think it's a very good, <laughs> very good example for a person who is organized and a person who isn't. Because I think we all know somebody who has all these folders on their phone and a, a person well, who just has 15 pages of apps and just isn't well organized at all. Um, Again, a high and a low for uh, conscientiousness to get a feeling what this factor means. And there is a correlation find as well with conscientiousness. It is, has been found that people um, who score high on conscientiousness, that they have an aptitude for programming. And this, when you think about it, is quite logical because, well, as a programmer, we get this abstract idea of a business, of a product owner, or somebody who wants us to make it. And it's always abstract. It's a desire. They want to have a feature. And we have to translate that and give it structure so it, the, the machine can read it and knows what to, what to do with it. So when you think about it, it's quite logical that people who score high on conscientiousness that they have an aptitude for programming. Doesn't mean that everyone who scores high should be a programmer, but the aptitude is there. That was our O for openness, C for conscientiousness, and our E for extroversion. And extroversion has not a nice amb ambience around it when you're talking to programmers, because this stereotype exists that we programmers are isolated all on the basement of our parents or something like that, and <laughs> always sitting behind your laptop and, well, with your noise-canceling headphones, don't disturb me. We're introverts, that's what they're saying. And when I give you the high and the low, 
because yes, research has well proven this stereotype to be true. Oh, in general, uh, we programmers um, score very low on extroversion, and the people who score high normally they're standing right here or they're the, the top uh, rankers on Stack Overflow, actually. Uh, those are the people who, are, who score high on extroversion. And when you, again, think about it, well, when you can choose uh, any role from a development team and look at each and every role that exists in a development team, then a programmer is one of the roles that has, well, today and uh, nowadays uh, a bit more, but it used to be the role that has least contact with the business people because you have the tester, they do the um, acceptance tests and you have uh, the business ana analysis and he does that. And a programmer, yeah, well, he or she could just do their thing. So when you think about it, yeah, you would prefer a role that costs you the least energy <laughs> Uh, otherwise, it's uh, the wrong profession, I think. <laughs> so, uh, we had our O for, for openness, our C for conscientiousness, our E for extroversion, and our A for agreeableness. We're almost done with our ocean. Uh, agreeableness is the factor that has to do with being cooperative and compassionate. And it has been found that uh, when the average level of agreeableness is high among a team, that the overall team satisfaction is also uh, higher. I don't think that uh, satisfaction is a reflection of uh, more productivity. I think it is important. But yeah, when you are among a team, because this uh, is the high and the low again of uh, uh, agreeableness, and when you're on a team where um, on average every person agrees with each other, yeah, then it's very nice to work because we all agree and we all share a very happy application. But we also need the people who score low because we need those people who can just be uh, brutal in, in their opinion and we need the critical, yeah, the, the people he, who can challenge us and be critical without, uh, well, bothering uh, in what, what it could uh, do <laughs> to sensitive people. <laughs> Um, that was our E of uh, ocean, it was the E for agreeableness. Then there's the N, O for openness, C for, con I'm going to repeat it over and over, O for openness, C for conscientiousness, E for extroversion, A for agreeableness, and our N for neur neuroticism, yeah, lost it there, neuroticism. And neuroticism is not something that has to do with being neurotic, uh, you can see it somewhere. No, it has to do with uh, your emotional stability. And actually, when you see the high and the low, it's the inverse of emotional stability. So when you score high on neuroticism, you're more, um, you're well, less, less stable, you're more reactive of what's happening around you, and you're a bit more uh, emotional. But they couldn't use emotional stability because then ocean wouldn't be ocean; it would be something else. I'm not gonna try. I'm not gonna try to pronounce it. Um, but uh, yeah, these are the people who score low are more like the stable people, and who uh, are not that inflicted when uh, you say something to them or something's happening around them. And actually, uh, there has been found that among those four languages that we, we covered, that the, the, the people who prefer to program in Python, that they score high on neuroticism. <laughs> and yeah, I've tried to program in Python uh, once, and it wasn't a great success, so I don't think I agree with the theory that they gave, because the theory that they gave was that uh, Python has a, v a rather low threshold to start with. As a programmer, it's uh, quite difficult to uh, understand it to start with this language. And so the people who are more insecure and, uh, well, more sensitive, that it's a nice language to start with because it's easier to start with they don't have that much disappointment to deal with than with other languages. 
again, this is the theory of the <laughs> researchers and the experience I have with Python, it was not like this. <laughs> For the people who know. Um, now that we have our ocean, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, neuroticism, can we say that there are two types of developers? Well, in a, a couple, uh, well, not, not too long ago, there was a research um, presented, well, a, a, a challenge was presented for researchers, and these re researchers, they, they got um, code snippets, and they got the corresponding questionnaires for the people who wrote these code snippets, and uh, they were challenged to find correlations. So during the rest of my talk, we're going to look at code snippets, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp them with our O for openness, or conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, or neuroticism. <laughs> and as you saw, um, these are five factors that you can score on on a certain degree. So any correlation that could exist between a factor and uh, a programming semantic can be associated with scoring high or scoring low. Well, I give that a red or a blue one. Um, during uh, the rest of the, co the code snippets that were presented uh, in this challenge, they did not follow any uh, company code conventions. So when you look at them, you just see it as a hobbyist who is at, at home just um, making a program for him or herself. The, he or she didn't have to uh, obliviate to any rules. So please forget about those things. This is the first uh, code snippet. I actually wrote it myself to, uh, I was trying to display um, a feature. So maybe it, it's not clear and my own personality slipped in. But what I was trying, what I was trying to display was this. This is a person, well, this is me, no. <laughs> this is a person who used rather long words. Method names, parameters, well, also a bit, the field names were a bit long. And what has been found, the correlation that the research found, was that the people who preferred to use long words, they scored high on conscientiousness. These were the organized and structured people, responsible as well. So when you see that a colleague of yours submits a piece of code that consists of rather long method names, then perhaps he or she can be a perfect scrum master. Because I would hate to do, I would hate to do it. But the scrum masters, they need to be responsible and organized and structured and stuff like that. And when you're lacking one, well, his or her code reflects it. So perhaps you can give him, him or her a chance. Don't just blankly, uh, blindly agree with the IE he or she scores high on consciousness. Just give it, give it a try, see what happens. Perhaps it's true. I, uh, the researchers that found this result, they, um, they didn't have a theory beforehand, and also not be afterwards. Um, <laughs> but, uh, well, the psychologist in me uh, wanted to be, make it logical why this is. And, well, when you're looking at other research concerning language, language use and uh, personalities, they give more theories. And uh, it is said that, or a possible reason for this is that people who are structured, they want to structure the way they talk, the way they communicate. They always use, for example, this method or the way they structure their method names. It's always, it does this and it does it to exactly this and that parameter. So perhaps it's just being clear and being structured in the way you, well, write your method names or parameters. Just a theory. So 
So, second. The second uh, code snippet is not really clear in what I'm trying to, to display, but perhaps you see it when I show it like this. Actually, it was written like this. So I think you can see that this person is lacking um, appropriate space. It's all really cramped up, just as closely as he or she could do it. And it has been found that people who prefer or are not providing the necessary space uh, that they score low on neuroticism. And neuroticism was inverse of emotional stability. These were the very steady and stable, secure people. My theory, <laughs> and why this would be, is that these people are not getting overwhelmed. They just want to well, have their information on uh, um, as less space as possible because it's, n it's not upsetting them. It's just more information in one piece. They can handle it. They're not getting uh, all that uh, upset about all the information that is overflowing them. And this this colleague of mine, I would send him to, uh, well, I think the product owner, when we're not getting the deadline. Yeah, I would. Because my product owner, he's not that forgiving when we don't get a deadline. So, so I know he's going to shout, and I know I'm not the person who can take it, but he, she, seems to be very stable. So perhaps he can take the first load of the, of the, of the product owner, <laughs> shouting, and, and, um, and then afterwards we just get a, a little degree of, of, of the anger. But he can, he can get the first, yeah, it's not upsetting for him or... So he can, he can continue to work afterwards, and I, well, I think I wouldn't. <laughs> That's what I would do. Yeah, you can go talk to her. Yeah, this is exactly, well, uh, when you're looking at the words, no, it's exactly the same piece of code, but as you can see, way too much space, way too much space. And before I'm going to reveal what stamp belongs on this piece of code, I'm very curious, scoring high, oh no. I'm very curious about um, which one you would prefer when you have to choose between, I hope you agree with me, to evil. Way too little space or way too much space? Who would prefer way too little? You afraid of what I'm going to show you? No. Who would prefer way too much? That will be the other half, I think. Yeah, so it's 50-50. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I prefer the middle. The middle. Yeah, <laughs> you had to choose, guy. No, it has been found yeah. that the people who would prefer to use uh, way too much space, they score high on openness. So. What I would have expected when I asked you beforehand who was Java programmer, Java, well, that was almost everyone, uh, everybody here, and well, a correlation was found between preferring Java and scoring high on openness, then, well, you would expect, psychology, you would expect <laughs> that the people who score high on openness and prefer Java, that they would also prefer to use a lot of white space. Yeah, uh, it's one less argument I have to give over that cup of coffee why I switched to the IT. <laughs> uh, psychology is not a hard science. It's always uh, a guiding, a guide for us and a way to look at the world differently. No, it's way too deep, I'm sorry. Um, this is a tweet I got. It's from oh, last year, not that long ago. And uh, Kevin is talking about the use of um, the, the asterisk to, uh, well, as an, well, wildcard, yeah, thanks. Um, as an import wildcard. And um, when, when you look at the rest of the 
threat. People react in, no, it's bad advice. He's right. Yeah, he, oh. it's, it's bad advice. And other people say, oh, no, it's, r it's terribly bad advice. Don't do it. Well, always, yeah, there's also some positive. Yeah, I usually do that. I love it. Other people say, yeah, I would prefer the, the language I'm coding in right now, I would do it. And within every discussion, there's always someone who's saying, who cares? <laughs> I don't care what this stupid discussion about. So there's always two sides. And just another poll for you. And then you can see what kind of person you... No. <laughs> then you will see what uh, the correlation will be. Who would prefer to uh, import selectively? Okay, and who would prefer to use the asterisk? Okay, the correlation is... Uh, the people who would prefer to uh, import selectively, they tend to uh, score low on eroticism. And this still, that's why I formulated my theory beforehand, this still holds true for the small amount needed to display your information. The people who are stable, they're not so scared for that amount of information on a small piece, or a, a small yeah, piece of your screen. While other people are like, okay, just clap it. Yeah, yeah the IDE does it, right? Now. Yeah. That was in the in the in the thread as, uh, thread as well. But yeah, true. Well, I think uh, that this is uh, pretty clear what I was trying to display because it was the first piece of code that <laughs> had some comments. And now I'm curious, we've covered a couple of examples. Who would think that this has anything to do with your level of openness? When you have to, uh, when you have to venture a guess, does anyone think it has to do with level of openness? Being, okay. Does some people think it has to do with the level of conscientiousness, structured? Extroversion, agreeableness, okay, and neuroticism last. Okay, not even the higher low, not, well, it has been found to correlate with uh, extroversion. And it's always with research, well, I think always with research, it's like, yeah, okay, when you hear it, yeah, I can explain that. Right? These are the talkative people. What are you doing? You chose the wrong profession because we have to be introverts. No, yeah. <laughs> among, <laughs> among us programmers, they're still extrovert people. What are you doing? You want to talk. Everybody has noise canceling on. What are you going to do? Just going to talk through the code. <laughs> they're going to read it afterwards. <laughs> and in fact, when you look, there's uh, this great website I'll share with you later on. But when you <laughs> look at some comments, these are actual comments among projects. <laughs> some people are just way too extrovert to be a programmer. They just want to communicate all the time. What are you doing behind the screen? <laughs> just go talk to people. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have the link uh, uh, later on. Oh yeah, well, yeah. Oh, when you oh, when you uh, are offended by the, well, then stop reading any further. I try to order them on their level of rudeness, <laughs> <laughs> because well, um, uh, well, we programmers not only program, but we also add our uh, Git commit messages, and these again are actual git commit messages there was this github project that said oh you can you can add your uh, uh, messages and well now come on is anyone who would think would like to venture a guess 
I'm not gonna give them all, but who would want to venture a guess? High on neuroticism. High on neuroticism. What's your theory? <laughs> <laughs> if you have any, <laughs> you don't, high on neuroticism. Anyone want to challenge him? Openness? Agreeableness, I heard. Yeah, it's low on agreeableness. These were the rude people, well, not rude, I'm sorry. These were the critical and challenging competing uh, people. <laughs> the, 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 yeah, the people we need. Um, so before you, you're going to pitch your new idea of using a framework to, well, I don't know who decides, hop, hop by this colleague. Because all well, he's gonna give it to you, his thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna give it to you. But you can you can collect from that, right? But these Git commit messages they were not only from uh, uh, Java uh, repos. So I was very curious to see that <laughs> where where we where we stood. <laughs> Uh, I've got the link at the end. Yeah, I've got the link. Uh, these are uh, comments. These are comments uh, found on uh, separate subreddits. So, so, as a Java developer, since well, we're third to worst, uh, I'm thinking that it's not only Java developers who who are commenting on the subreddits, right? We we can be that rude. This is also a project that was, uh, or an analysis that has been done uh, between 2013 and 14. So perhaps there have been a couple of Java releases, so perhaps right now we would be po more positive. <laughs> the other way, when you look at it, it's also analyzed. Where are we? Can I? Uh, where are we? Where are we? There we are. <laughs> We're not so positive either. <laughs> and when I and when I compared these two, the one that stood out for me the most was Visual Basics, <laughs> because <laughs> they are not very positive. They, they but when you look at how negative they are, they're not very negative either. <laughs> what are they talking about? <laughs> the two <pro> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just all very neutral. So these are the yeah, maybe less emotional people. They prefer to program in uh, in Visual Basics, I guess. <laughs> I've covered some. I've covered some of uh, the research with you, and well, I wa what I want to give away is well, I started with my question: Can we say that there are two types of developers? And I'm saying no, there aren't. You can always venture an educated guess. And the only thing that I want to uh, give to you today is uh, think um, a bit differently when you see a piece of code that you would do differently yourself. Don't uh, well, start judging or think it's wrong. Maybe it's just another person, another personality that tries to do that job, right? And perhaps you can use it when you see a feature that, that we saw a correlation with today. Perhaps you can think, okay, yeah, I can, I can give him or her a try because research has found this or that. So maybe you can give her, your colleague a try. And well, I talk way too fast, so we can have all, we can take all the time we need for some uh, questions if anyone has one. I'm Well, yeah. Oh, I had it on my laptop. I'm uh, rather high on openness and on uh, neuroticism. I'm rather high at both. Yeah. <laughs> Very re yeah <laughs> reactive. Yeah. Or if personality traits can change. Yeah, obviously you mentioned like codependence, so you can get people to code different, but does that impact on personality or is that right? the other way around? Uh, there's not done any research on that, or not that I could 
find. Uh, yeah, find. Um, no, there, no. I, I wanted to make a statement, but I don't think I'm uh, in the right place to do so. <laughs> I'm sorry? Is the personality test, your personality test, is it evaluating any synthetic, any core piece? No, no, this is just a personality test if you're interested in w what your degrees are. The, when you want to look at the uh, challenge, uh, you can. The um, samples uh, are still available. They also uh, still open in what format you have to submit. So I don't know if I have any data sciences among us. Uh, when you're interested, you can find all the uh, data on this link. You can uh, well, try yourself to find a good algorithm. Yeah. In, uh, in all your examples, you focus mainly on, on coding style and uh, commerce and, and the, the length of the method name. But do these things also apply to how you write code? For example, one person might make one class with one method that does everything, <laughs> and then you have somebody who creates specific classes that do very specific things. And is there anything you can say about that? Um, no, there isn't in that way that uh, research hasn't uh, find any significant correlations with features like this. I was a bit disappointed too. I also wanted to well, put an end to the whole spaces and tabs discussion. <laughs> But uh, Google, no, no, uh, no, there isn't. And uh, perhaps the correlation could exist, but they uh, haven't found the right model yet. Perhaps this model doesn't fit. Can. Uh, the challenge, you mean? The research are from uh, well, a variety of uh, researchers, somewhere from India and somewhere from uh, England. Um, I think <laughs> I, I think that some personalities uh, are yeah, well. When you look at the research, it, it states that people who are organized uh, have an aptitude for programming, and I think well, you benefit in a way that yeah, your code is more structured when you, when you score high on conscientiousness. So I think that some coding styles can be better. When you look at, for example, the whole uh, clean coding book, for example, um, they stated that you have to import uh, selectively and stuff like that. So I think, yeah, well, it always has something with preferences to do, but yeah, I think you can have a personality that is best matching the, the best code convention, I, I think, yeah. Does that answer your question? No more questions? Oh, oh. What about collaborations uh, with culture? Because you said some of them were in the UK, some of them were in India. Yeah, um, they, ha they haven't looked at the, the cultural di differences. Um, there's always a quite a, d a debate between gender and stuff like that and uh, uh, language use. But I'm, yeah, that's an all, a whole other topic. Uh, and I think uh, we can discuss over it later, later on. Ah, you mean the cultural uh, has, has influence on your personality? No, 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 the, the culture actually, well, he, he actually suggests, and other psychologists suggest, that uh, it can be real, well translated to different cultures. So, because there are other personality tests that are we're going to be skewed by culture, gender, age, or, and this is the one that stands to the test. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so the, so what you're saying is the answer is 
because it's irrelevant for this uh, specific for this it model. Can, it can, it can stand the test. Like you will want, you won't have as as skilled resource as yeah. the other one. Because the, the skill, there is a lot of, 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 of conversation about how accurate they are. If you take the test today and you repeat the test in two months, what happens? That's it. No, that's okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for elaborating. And it's and it's also it's a very uh, interesting discussion. And when you look at uh, the what culture does to personality and how that's well uh, normally distributed, then uh, well perhaps you would expect that to be of uh, code conventions as well and code preferences. Perhaps that doesn't exist. Um, now, uh, within within this uh, these studies, they took uh, years of experience. They took uh, into the um, algorithm, and uh, it didn't have any influence on the outcomes. I think, of course, you can um, um, become a better developer, and you develop differently over time. Uh, the companies you work for can influence that because they have code conventions. Um, but I think. Uh, when you're talking about personality and when you're talking about coding, there's one way when we're discussing uh, the best way, um, there is one way that is preferred by uh, people, and you try to program in that way, but well, your personality, it's your uh, default behavior. So uh, it's always going to slip in there, because you can't uh, think about every letter you write. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not doing that. Not only five years ago, yeah, perhaps you're very well disciplined that you overthink every line you write. No, no, it's not just like that. <laughs> I, I know this old talk is more like a kind of fun, like present in a funny way. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was uh, intended to be fun and also a bit, yeah, well, something to think about. I have, yeah, I have seen a lot of papers uh, while I was uh, pr preparing this talk. I have seen a lot of papers uh, that concerned uh, uh, pair programming and uh, personalities. I intentionally uh, let them be because it's an all, a whole other topic because it has to do with social interactions. And yes, your personality has influence on that. But um, that's a whole other topic. So there is, but I don't have it on the back of my mind. No more questions? Well, then, thank you very much. <laughs>